Hello and welcome to more Banjo-Tooie! We are going to take another huge chunk out of Pterodactyl Land today. And I think the first thing we should do is probably make up for some mistakes I made last time. Because sometimes that happens. So what I want to do is actually drop down here. Let's see what, what spots I want to drop down. You know what, let's just drop down here. I, oh, you know what, I should have taken the warp pad back to the start of the stage. But, you know, I'll just meet you guys back at the start. And uh, there's something we need to get that I forgot to get last time. Actually, no, this is the perfect spot. We just want to go right up this vine real quick. All right, so back in this area, this is the river passage. Last time I was kind of deep in conversation, deep in thought. So I sort of kind of went right past the jam jars that we need to get. So let me actually get that right inside this room. It's pretty easy to miss if you just look to your side. There is a jam jars right up there. However, we have to get this one as just Banjo. So let me show you a couple of ways we can do that. One is, of course, we just go up here, get the split pad, and you can use the pack jump to do the double jump with Banjo. That'll help out. Um, but there's another way, which I'm guessing is what they intend for you to do. So let me show you guys that. And while I do this, just real quickly, I want to say, this is kind of unrelated to this video, but I think I finally want to get an intro for my videos. So if any of you guys happen to make intros, or if you know anyone that commissions intros, uh, let me know. Just post a comment or tweet me, and uh, maybe we can work something out. So for these guys, there's some Snapdragons. You can't really kill them with Banjo by himself. So we kind of have to use those grenade eggs to kill them beforehand. I think that's what they mean for you to do. So then you split up the Banjo, then you go and uh, grip grab along here. Once again, just use the pack jump. Like, that makes it so much easier. I don't think they intended for the pack jump to be in the game. That's why I kind of think it's a glitch. Because why would this section even exist if you could just double jump up there, you know? But... As soon as we drop down here, we can go talk to the jam jars we didn't get last time. 405 notes will get us the taxi pack. No, Kazooie means space in your pack. A way to fill it is what you lack. Pick large things up off the ground, in they go, and carry them round. Yes, indeed. So with that, we can actually go back to Witchy World and do the last jiggy there. That's the ability we needed for that. But I'm going to meet you guys back at the top of the mountain. Here we are back at the top of the mountain. And next, I want to actually go uh, right across here. So there's some enemies that are up in the air. And these guys are humongous pain in the butts. They will knock you right off the side very easily. So I am killing them before I go. And um, that land formation down there, I'm not going to say anything. Gosh dang it, why am I on Xbox Live? Hold on. I have successfully disconnected from Xbox Live. Much better. Anyways, I'm not going to say anything about that land formation down below other than... I'll let you guys interpret what it is. <laughs> Let's just go across. Kind of a precarious little little bridge here, but we'll be fine. Let's go across. We got... Oh my gosh. Every time I pick up a health, I'm reminded that we really need to go to Honeybee. We'll do that soon. I, I really mean it. I know I keep saying that, but we, we really will go back there probably after we beat this stage. Alright, so we got that guy killed off. Now for these fires here, we just got to put them out with the ice eggs. Very simple to do. This one as well. We can just go across. Just like that. It's so easy. Alright. Let's keep going. Oh, we can get some egg restocks. You know what? Let's get the grenade eggs, because I tend to use those quite a lot. Wait for it. And got it. Alright. It's kind of weird. When you're picking up eggs, sometimes the eggs will swap to the next egg. But if you pick it up, like, right after it swaps, even though it shows... For example, it shows, like, fire eggs... If you pick it up right when it swaps it, it'll still give you the blue eggs, for example. So there's kind of a weird a weird delay there. But here we're in the stomping fields. You uh, can see some giant footprints here, and it's probably not going to give you very uh, friendly feelings. And uh, for some reason, the walls are covered in polka dots. I have no idea why the walls are looking like that, but they are. So we have Stumpanodon Triassic Steamroller. This guy is basically a gigantic dinosaur leg, and he's going to be stomping all over the place. Now, we can deal with this very easily because golden feathers make us immune to this. The goal is just to get across the field without getting killed, and this guy, if he actually hits you, will drop you down to 1 HP, even if you're at full. So no matter what your HP at is, as long as it's not 1 already, it'll drop you down to 1. And if it hits you when you're at 1, it'll kill you. So two hits from any health uh, will kill you. So once we're across, we can go and hit this button. And get ourselves a Jiggy! There's also a split up pad before the field, and we have to get across as Banjo Solo and as Kazooie Solo as well. Now doing that, we can't use Gold Feathers, and we actually can't get across as Banjo by himself at all right now, but we can get across with Kazooie, and it's actually pretty easy. So let's switch over to her. And the way we do that is simply Kazooie's very fast. It makes things pretty easy. We just go inside the little footprints here, and just go along the, go along the line. Oh, gosh! I actually jumped into it, kind of like a scrub. That's what happens sometimes when you go a little bit too fast. So you want to time things so you kind of jump as his foot is going up, but if you jump too soon, you're going to jump right into that crud. 
But right over here, we can go and step on this. Get ourselves a Jinjo. We're getting a black one here. I think we have three or four of these. Four, all right, four out of nine. And I'm not gonna use that Swap Cloud because uh, like I said, we can't get Banjo across here quite yet. We need more skills for that. So let's just go pick up Banjo and let's get back out of this place. So I think what we're going to do next is actually drop down. So we could have actually, you know what? I just want to warp to the top of the mountain. Let's do that. I was going to walk back, but why the heck would I walk all the way back across when they conveniently give me a warp pad to use? That's kind of what it's there for, right? So let's warp back to the top of the mountain. And I'm going to use that trick I showed you guys before where you ground pound and you go off the side and it makes you not take fall damage. So let's just do that because I want to get right back down here now. Oh, I could have used that beehive. Oh, well. So right here... If we go inside this little hole, there's actually going to be one of those armored guys. If we go to the other side, he'll turn towards us. So we can't just jump across ourselves, but if we just use a Clockwork Kazooie egg, we can jump across and he'll keep looking towards where Banjo and Kazooie are. So we can just go all the way behind him and blow him up using this crud. And conveniently, we can get notes as we do so, so that's pretty awesome. Let's sneak right up behind him and explode on that booty! Ugh! I think there's just one of those guys left. We're doing pretty good here. We got that guy taken care of. Let's move on. Oh, no. Whoa. Almost fell off there. Let's not let that happen. Uh, do I want to go inside that cave? I don't think so. Let's just go down to the warp pad here. Okay, guys. This is going to be a bit awkward, but I actually do want to go inside this cave. Right now, I'm actually splicing in a clip. The episode itself is actually done recording already, uh, but I actually thought that I already went inside this cave in the last episode, so I got confused. And the reason that happened is because I've recorded this episode twice. I recorded it back on Friday, and I was just so tired, so my commentary was awful, so I ended up uh, scrapping it and trying again. So I thought I already went inside here and got this ability, but I didn't. So for this, we have to go in as Kazooie by herself. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, after we do this section, I'm going to splice back to the original recording. And you guys might hear me at some point mention that, you know, I already got Hatch, uh, this ability coming up. And that I just forgot to save my game or something. Now it turns out I just completely forgot to get it. I thought I did it in the previous episode. So let's go ahead and split here. Let's go over to Kazooie. So hopefully this makes sense. I I am no stranger to making myself look like an idiot, so let's just go ahead and splice this in. I could try recording it again, but it turns out this episode I just always am bad at. So we're just gonna go ahead and splice this in here. So here we get the hatch ability. I can't believe that you're a bird who can't hatch eggs. It's so absurd. So hold down left trigger or right trigger and then press X. Then a real bird I'll finally see. So he kind of messes up his rhymes right there, and the reason for it is in the original game, you would press B, so he would rhyme B with C, but in this game you press X, so X and C just don't really rhyme. So kind of just an inconvenience that we use a different button in this, so the rhymes don't really line up. But now that we have the hatch ability, we've basically gained the ability to sit down and rub our butt on things. So let's go do that right here. We can sit down and rub our butt on this egg right here, and we can actually hatch it. And that's one of the little dragons we have to save. You can also now go back to uh, Jolly Roger's Lagoon and hatch Tip Tup's egg, so we can totally do that. Also on the N64 version with this ability, you can now go and do the, uh, the stop and swap eggs back at Heggy's place, so that's pretty cool. So right here, guys, I'm actually going to splice back into the original. So try not to be confused when I say that I uh, forgot to save and I already got hatch and all that stuff. So anyways, back to the original. I guess we can activate that. We can also go inside Wumba's place. I think that is what I want to do. We can go transform. It kind of already got spoilers for what we're going to transform into in this stage, but oh well, let's just go inside and make it happen. Here, Wumba, take that globo. Uh, yes, I would like to give it to you. We got that one in the last episode, just in case anyone missed that. So let's just toss it right into the pool. And let's get that transformation! Magic ready, jump into the Wumba pool. I don't know why her pool is so magic, but it is. It's kind of strange, because the pool will not actually transform you until you give her a Globo, so... Either the Globo has some magical properties that she actually uses. I figured she just used the Globo for herself, and then uh, the pool was just... She just let us use her pool by giving her the Globo. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe, um, maybe the Globo has some kind of fancy on-off switch. I don't know. Let's go down here and actually talk to a dinosaur, though, because we're not very good at being a dinosaur quite yet. Maybe we should go get some tips. Wow, a new dinosaur! What are you? I'm a vicious T-Rex, bruh! Well, he doesn't think I'm very vicious, which is probably true. And we don't exactly know how to roar, so, you know what, let's get some tips here. Just tap X for a short roar and hold X for a long one. That'll come in handy, so keep that in mind. Do you want to go back up here? So now we saw that little dinosaur door uh, behind Wumba. 
Now that we have the ability to roar at it, we can actually open it. This is kind of similar to Witchy World when we had the van, where you honked open doors. Kind of the same thing. But let's go inside, and we can get ourselves a Cheeto page! We can also check out the sign. It's actually pretty important. So here he says, Roar, 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 roar! Then the glittering prize will be yours. So if we follow that code, we put that in somewhere, and that'll give us something good. So I know exactly where to go put that in. Let's go do it. We just want to go back over this way next to the path up to the nest sign. And let's roar this crud. Thank you for letting me in. Let's go through. And since we killed off that big guy, we can actually go right through this tunnel. If he was not dead, we'd have to jump across those little stone paths. So right here, this is where we actually want to put in the code. If we read that sign, it'll say, enter the dinosaur code or whatever. So we do roar. 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 Then short. And then two longs. And for all that trouble, we get ourselves a Jiggy! Alright! It is just that easy. Well, I'm actually gonna go back to Wumbus, guys. So I'm not gonna make you guys sit through walk watching me go all the way back. So I'll just meet you there. Alright, here we are back as Banjo and Kazooie. So let's actually go back out. Uh, there's more stuff we can do here. There's quite a lot of stuff. Over here, there's actually a giant switch, which we'll come and deal with later. This one... It'll have a dinosaur picture on it, but if we were to come over this with the dinosaur, it just wouldn't push yet. We can't do anything with that quite yet. So for now, let's just go and hit this button instead. This one is one that Banjo and Kazooie can actually handle. And this is the train activation switch for this stage. Now, back in Witchy World, you might have remembered that we got a dinosaur that wanted to come back to here. And we got them on the train. So this will open the door. It's not going to activate the train quite yet. We still have to go talk with that sign. But that'll give us a good start at least. So, hey, it's, it's something, right? Uh, there's also a boulder over here we want to go break, because inside there'll be goodies. I mean, of course, there's always got to be goodies inside boulders, right? So we break that guy open, and we get a treble clef. We kind of didn't see it there, but that was 20 notes. And there's actually still more to do, quite a lot of stuff to do over in this side of the map. I think I want to go somewhere else, actually. Whoops. Okay, you know how I said there's a lot to do over in this side of the map? I actually meant to go somewhere else. Sometimes I just kind of get myself mixed up. Some of the areas look a little bit similar. So let's just warp back to the level entry. That's what I actually want to do right now. And we're going to go ahead and head this way. We could have gone here earlier on, but I figure now's a good time. So let's just do it now. So we're going to go up through this place. And speaking of that dinosaur I was just uh, mentioning, the, the one from uh, Witchy World. If we go inside here, we will actually find... The Styr Styracosaurus family cave. It's, it's the family cave for those dinosaurs. There's going to be a whole bunch of them in here. And there's one right there, one right there, and over there is an empty nest up top. That is where, of course, the dinosaur we're going to bring here is going to be. But you know what? Let's go talk to the big dinosaurs, see what their story is. Go away, let away. Leave Scrotty alone. Well, if that's how you greet visitors. Yeah, it's not exactly the most friendly, are they? Well, they are kind of sad. They Maybe they're just dealing with depression or something. So the family's not doing too good. Never a good thing to hear. I can only imagine how it must feel being a parent and having your family not going so well. So the eldest grad, he's very sickly, and he's a doctor urgently. Well, I am... I'm not a doctor. I probably should not take care of dinosaurs. They say any doctor will do, but I'm not a doctor. But she does mention a crazy shaman that lives on the clifftop, so... We'll have to come back as, as Mumbo sometime. Scrit here was out walking one day and came back this size. So now he's too tiny. That's probably not a good thing either. And finally, we have Scrut, who has gone missing. She took some money from her purse. Why does the dinosaur have a purse? I have no idea, but apparently they do. But of course, we're probably going to have to help them out with all these problems. I mean, that's what you kind of do in these games, right? It's nice to know not every character in this game is bad. Yep, there are some good characters. Definitely Banjo and Kazooie are good characters. So the main reason we wanted to come here is that we want to break this boulder. Breaking that, we'll open up a Mumbo Switch. So now we can come back as Mumbo and actually do stuff. And while we're here, we might as well go over this way, break this boulder as well. Then we can use the split-up pad and use Kazooie on that, uh, whatchamacallit. Let's go over to Kazooie. We can use it on the Shock Spring, because Shock Springing is higher with just Kazooie, and I don't think Banjo and Kazooie could get it just together. So let's grab that. Up to 12 Honeycomb pieces. I think that is enough for us to get two more health pieces. So that'll be pretty awesome. But you know what? Let's get back out of here. So we're back outside the cave, and directly to the left is actually where I want to go next. Ow! Not the floor! Don't faceplant, Banjo. Dang! Uh, over here, though, there's a lot of holes in the wall, so that's what we want to actually deal with. 
Basically, we can go inside these holes using the Clockwork Kazooie, and certain holes, dead ends, certain holes, uh, not useful by any means, but some of them will lead to good stuff, and I know exactly which ones to use, so let's drop our Clockwork Kazooie down in there. Let's get started. The one on the far right on the bottom level, we go through that, and it takes us right to the Jinjo, so we get our purple one, six out of eight, wow. The second biggest family for the Jinjos, and we're almost done with it. Let's go ahead and drop down another one here. Now this one we're going to take to the one directly to the left of that guy. And once we go through here, we're going to go over to the left a bit more. And there we go, this time it'll bring us behind here. Now, last time we killed one of these guys, I said we only had one left. I was actually mistaken, there's two left. So now that we killed this guy, now there is one left. So my bad on that, I kind of made a little flub earlier on. But, we got that taken care of. Now I actually want to split up here. Let's go back over to Kazooie once again. I guess today is just like Kazooie's time to shine. We had the Stomp It On fields, we had the honeycomb piece in the family cave, and now we have this. So just lots of Kazooie by herself, which is kind of awesome. I, I love Kazooie, but we can't go across like that. So let's just go up here. I want to grab these springy shoes. Oh gosh, I, well, I'm a dummy. I just hit A. Wait, can I still make it up there? Oh, you still can! Wow, look at that skill. I just wanted to get right up here to the uh, fly pad. We're going to use this to get across this way. Because there actually is an egg we want to hatch over here. And the thing is, I honestly don't know any way. Oh my gosh, I'm flying like a dweeb. Would you fly downwards? Uh, I guess I'm just going to go all the way up to this wall. I don't know why my angle is so strange, but it kind of is. But I think once we get to this wall, we can actually go down. As awkward as this is. But yes, I could not find any other way to get up on top of here. If you guys know a better way to get up on top of this egg, let me know. Would you get down? There we go. But yeah, this, that's the only way I could find to do it was using that fly pad. But well, let's go ahead and hatch this crud. Did... Did my game not save after last time and I don't have my hatch ability? Are you serious? Apparently, once again, my game did not save after last recording, so I don't have hatch. Let me go do that real quick. Gosh dang it. Hooray, I'm getting hatch again. Alright, we're back. And guys, last time I was an absolute idiot pressing up to fly down. Because I'm so used to inverted controls in certain situations, so... Maybe you should press down to fly down, that works out. Now we have the hatch ability, and now I'm paranoid. Like, what else could I have possibly missed from last episode? What do I have to redo? So, I'll have to check up on that. Um, the game really doesn't have that many issues with saving. All you have to do is make sure you actually pause and hit exit game when you're done playing. I just forget to do that sometimes, and I just turn my game off when I'm done. So that's, that's my own fault. That's not really the game's fault there. But anyways, let's go meet up back with Banjo. We got Banjo, and we're actually gonna just head back to the start of the level, guys. And with that, we've taken a huge chunk out of Terry Dactyland. We still got more to do, but we'll come back next time and finish off this stage. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you then. Take care.